OK, so generally, uh, what is Python? Uh, general purpose coding language, um, and it has a very clean and simple syntax. Uh, you don't need any uh, special uh, you know, squiggly lines or uh, parentheses, which kind of get in the way. It's super nice to be able to just quickly code, and that's what kind of Python is all about. Um, it allows for object-oriented programming, functional programming, and a bunch of other programming paradigms. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, check out python.org uh, for all of your Python needs. All right, um, so why is Python good for VFX? Uh, like I said before, it's really easy, uh, clean syntax, and you can learn it really, really quickly. Um, there's no curly braces, and like I say, curly braces should be left for emoticons, not programming. Um, otherwise, you end up with you know maybe two, three hundred extra characters in your programming uh, code than you actually need. Um, so if you compare it to like JScript or JavaScript or uh, one of the other crazy languages that are out there, uh, you have a lot less to worry about in terms of syntax, and you can just get things uh, done instead of having to worry about putting in extra code. Um, it's simple but powerful. Uh, you can create really simple scripts to just you know loop over things uh, and just run commands that are in your uh, 3D software. Um, or you can actually get into deeper things like uh, uh, classes and inheritance, and uh, that kind of actually takes you uh, a little bit um, kind of beyond just the scripter uh, kind of uh, label. You can actually start becoming uh, a semi-pro programmer. Um, so uh, again, most DCCs uh, like Maya, Softimage, uh, Houdini support Python, and it's actually uh, part of the VFX platform. It's a, an initiative uh, that uh, brings Autodesk, uh, SideFX, and a bunch of other uh, companies together to decide on like what is the standard um, kind of technologies that VFX are using, um, and it's updated year to year uh, depending on uh, uh, what the committee decides to put in uh, for the next year's release. Um, if you go to VFX platform, platform.com, you can actually find out all the information about this year's uh, spec and then next year's spec as well. Python versus JScript. This is a little sample from Softimage, but uh, basically what I was saying before, you don't have a lot of uh, parentheses or squiggly brackets or semicolons at the end of, uh, of your code. So what I do in like you know 90 characters compared to like 120 something like it it actually uh, affects uh, how much time you're actually spending on coding. So this is why I like to jab at uh, other programming languages that kind of make you do this. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. But again, I focus on what can save me time and what I can use on a daily basis that kind of gets me uh, going and lets me do as much as possible during the day. Um, so there's various tasks that you can use uh, Python for. Uh, it pretty much uh, spans the entire range of uh, VFX from modeling, uh, rigging, animation, special effects, rendering, compositing, editing. You can uh, go on the pipeline uh, end of things where you're managing files, uh, managing uh, tasks uh, and uh, email systems. You know, it, uh, it ties in everywhere. Um, I'm going to be focusing mainly on the rigging aspect because you know, that's what I do. Uh, again, software that supports it, uh, Softimage, Max, Maya, Houdini, Nuke, Fusion, Mari. Uh, Fabric Engine supports it a little bit. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, it's not directly implemented, but they do have a wrapper for it or a, uh, a module. So it lets you actually ac access other uh, uh, technologies uh, using Python. And that's kind of the, the theme that I'm going with uh, here. Um, so Python can actually allow you to access different types of technologies uh, really easily because uh, there's pretty much uh, any of the technologies that are used in VFX have a Python uh, wrapper or Python bindings for that technology. So OpenImage.io, uh, FBX, and Alembic have uh, Python uh, bindings or Python modules that you can install locally. Uh, manipulate those files, uh, find out what's inside of them, and actually uh, do some uh, editing with the, those files as well. Um, so Alembic is used uh, mainly in, uh, in uh, pipelines for caching out geometry, objects, transforms, you know, how actually uh, the meshes move around when they're deformed, and it uh, kind of bakes it out to files. So uh, this is actually one of the bigger uh, things that I've uh, worked on in the last year is actually using Alembic in our pipeline. And I had to uh, do a lot of work uh, with the, uh, the Python uh, modules that uh, come with it, but also implementing plugins inside Softimage and Maya uh, so we can easily transfer the data back and forth. 
Um, you can create asset publishing uh, systems using it as well. I think Dave might touch on this a little bit later, so I'll leave that alone. Um, and again, uh, a lot of plugins for all of your DCCs uh, allow you to build them with Python. Uh, so uh, the main thing to remember is Python is your uh, programming language that will kind of cover the bases for whatever uh, applications that you're using uh, within uh, the VFX pipeline. Okay, so rigging. What is rigging? Uh, if you don't know, it's basically creating uh, bones and control systems for characters um, and attaching skin to those bones, doing extra deformers uh, like muscles, uh, and uh, basically tying the entire character together, I would say. So you have uh, a control layer, the mesh layer, and then uh, the, the actual bones. And so uh, you tie everything together um, in this process called rigging. Um, so if you have a bunch of characters that are all humanoid characters, um, if you didn't have programming, you'd have to go in and place these bones uh, by hand uh, for each one of these characters. So if you're on a production and you have 50 characters, you don't want to be sitting there doing you know, a, a bone placement for each one every single time. So what you can do instead is to use Python to automate these tasks. Um, so what I've done and what many uh, studios have done and even some software uh, developers have done um, is create an uh, automatic rigging system slash, uh, well, it's more than a rigging system, but I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. But it allows you to basically create objects and build rigs automatically um, and basically run a script to build a rig and attach the skin uh, to, the, to the rigs um, automatically. Um, it saves a lot of time, um, and uh, it's, uh, you can get an insane amount of work done uh, with this. And uh, basically, um, on our current production, I can't say what it is, but we have about 50 to 60 characters, and I can run through and re-rig them uh, for, uh, let's see, it would probably take a, an entire day, but it's better like one day than having to regenerate it uh, you know, hand by hand like for a span of like two to three weeks. So. Uh, there's different things that happen during uh, production where you might actually have to fix something or implement a new feature into a rig. And instead of having to go in and open each one of those files one by one, do the fix by hand, you can just simply program it uh, in the fix and then deploy it out and push out all the changes. So I've had to re-rig uh, our current uh, characters probably five to ten times now. So without Python, that would have been very, very very much work, uh, and I would be very sad and probably crying every night when I go home. Uh, it happens, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about Kraken here. Um, it's our new rigging uh, framework that we're uh, developing at Hybrid. We're actually working with the uh, uh, Fabric Engine as well, um, and we're utilizing their technology. And we're able to um, basically build the rigs in Softimage, but also uh, pull up Fabric Engine's operators and install them into the rigs using Python um, and get them all uh, built up into a, a single rig. And so we're actually using Softimage, uh, all the objects inside Softimage. And we're also using Fabric Engine, which is a completely different uh, kind of DCC slash technology. Um, so to explain quickly what Fab Fabric Engine is, it's a technology where you can make programs, you can uh, develop your own DCC, you can create uh, deformers for your rigs, you can create uh, a renderer if you wanted to. Um, but it's a very, very uh, uh, efficient uh, computational uh, uh, engine. And so we use that to kind of optimize our rigs and be able to do things that you may not be able to do without it, um, such as having uh, 300 uh, bones on a, a character in a crowd rig uh, multiplied by 1,000 characters on screen. So most of the time with crowd characters, you have to kind of strip down the rig and make it really simple, only like 10 to 20 bones. But with our system using uh, fabric, we can push out thousands of rigs with 300 bones each and still have it go through the system without a problem. Um, so the other benefit of uh, Kraken as I'm uh, building it, it, the one idea that uh, I needed to kind of uh, uh, concentrate on is that since Softimage is kind of coming to an end, I need to be able to go to another uh, technology. So we're probably going to transition to Maya. So I wanted a technology where I could actually build a system where I could literally copy and paste code 
uh, from Soft Damage to Maya, run it, and it would do the exact same thing. So we've been able to do that, and it's actually working really well. Um, so I have it working in Maya and Soft Damage. Uh, 3D Studio Max may come if uh, I find a volunteer who actually wants to uh, do this because I do not want to work in Max. Uh, so if you know any volunteers, uh, maybe I would talk to you later. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, Houdini might be uh, coming up as well. Um, it's basically any uh, application that Fabric Engine integrates into, we can uh, port uh, Kraken over as long as they support Fabric Engine and Python. Um, so uh, it, it's a language to create objects and do a bunch <laughs> of other things. So it's not strictly for rigging, but it's the main purpose behind it right now. Um, I'll skip over a bunch of this because I've already done it. So a high-level overview of Kraken is basically you have a description of a rig in Python, and then you send that to the different builders for each DCC, which is uh, these builders are described in Python as well. It just they are customized per uh, application. So for Softimage, it has the Softimage commands uh, that are running in it through Python. Maya, same thing. 3D Studio Max would be the same thing as well. Um, and then you get your generated rigs out of that, and the rigs should be absolutely identical going through uh, this process uh, for whatever builder that you send it through. Um, yeah, uh, try to run through this really quickly. Um, so uh, a rig actually um, describes all the different components uh, that you may have. So uh, you might have an arm, two arms, three arms, four, uh, spine, head, neck, all this. So those are actually um, kind of uh, described as components. And then so the rig class you uh, define uh, by importing the uh, individual components into it and then running the build on the rig. So it's kind of like a hierarchy. You have your rig and then your components and then your components break down into simple objects. Um, I'll kind of go through that in the next few slides. Um, but the thing to kind of remember is that Python allows you to uh, subclass off of uh, class objects. And these class objects are kind of containers in themselves. And these containers, you can kind of make a copy of it and then customize it as well. So if you have one biped rig that is defined in uh, Python, you can kind of make a copy of it, uh, subclass it, and then customize just a few little things uh, that might be different. So maybe this copy of it has only one arm, or maybe this one uh, is named differently, or you need to change the, the certain colors on this rig uh, instead of uh, just using the default. Um, maybe you need to uh, include a, an extra component. Say one character uh, is just a normal human, but this character uh, is a human, but he has a tail. You can do that by just simply subclassing and including this extra component into it. Um, so again, components are basically uh, a collection of simple objects that you can actually include uh, and build through uh, Kraken. Uh, sim the simple objects are locators, nulls, uh, bones, constraints, uh, direct connections, um, any type of uh, parameters. Uh, all the basic simple objects in each DCC um, is supported. Um, they're all Python classes, so you can, uh, if you wanted to build just a null through Kraken, you could do that. You could actually just instance uh, a single null, run the build on it, and it would just give you one null. Um, we do have a math library in there as well, so you can actually set uh, vectors and matrix uh, matrices and transforms. So not only can you place a null in there, you can actually place it in a certain uh, position and orientation. Uh, so we, with Python, you can do all these really, really cool things, and uh, Kraken does a really good job of translating it from one DCC uh, to the next. Um, a little bit of code here, uh, just to show you kind of what uh, Python looks like uh, in uh, Kraken. Um, and so basically, you can the scene item is the most basic uh, 3D object you can have in Kraken. It's a locator. It's a null. Um, so basically, uh, the scene item is what all other objects subclass off of. So whether I have a, a curve object, a bone, um, I don't know, a mesh uh, at some point we might be able to implement as well. Um, but these are all just standard uh, attributes that any object in your DCC will have. Um, so the name of it, the parent, uh, component is a little bit specialized for us. Uh, children, uh, constraints, expos, all this stuff is pretty standard. Um, but then we have uh, some 
uh, functions. I didn't expand them, but again, all this code is available online. If you want it, uh, want to take a, a look, just contact me after. But we have methods for doing simple things, but also some more complex things. So you can have a method to get the name of the object, uh, get the full name, including the parent hierarchy, uh, getting the parent, setting the parent. Uh, it's all uh, pretty much object oriented. Um, in uh, Kraken, so uh, basically following that uh, paradigm, uh, you should be able to access the actual objects uh, throughout the hierarchy that you make. So if you create a null and parent another null, you can get to the parent through the child and vice versa. Um, it was one of the standard things that uh, I think uh, you would want to do uh, when you're creating a system like this. Um, so for curves, like NURBS objects, we implemented this as well. Um, so we had to kind of uh, look at the different technologies like Maya and Softimage and see, okay, what, what are the common things between the two? And like the NURBS uh, format is not the same at all. So I just picked one, I picked the Maya format, and then in my Softimage builder, it translates the Maya one to the Softimage one. So Python is able to uh, kind of let you do those types of things where like the f formatting of certain data is in one format, you can swap it around and push it back into uh, another uh, format if you need um, and continue your work. Um, let's see. All right, so an example of a hand component um, in, uh, in Kraken. Let's zoom in on this. Okay. Um, so an SRT buffer is basically a null parent of an object, uh, but then down uh, here you have a, a cube control, which is an actual control object, and you just are able to parent them uh, together simply by a, uh, uh, a variable uh, declared when you instance the, uh, the object. Um, so all this kind of uh, should be briefly kind of uh, familiar if you're using any of the DCCs like Maya or Softimage. When you run a command to parent two objects in Maya, you'll see the command printed out parent or, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, delete objects, uh, rotate objects. You, you have the same type of language. And that's the whole purpose of Kraken is to kind of bring, uh, uh, bring a common language to the problem uh, so you don't have to remember how to do stuff. Uh, in Maya and Softimage, or you, you don't have to write two sets of code to do the same thing. You can actually unify the whole process uh, without having to do that. Uh, check my time. Okay, a few more minutes. I'm almost done. Don't worry. Okay, so just to compare things, um, the the builder scripts are actually uh, exactly the same, except there's a few lines of code in each function that are DCC specific. So when I go to build a locator in uh, Kraken, I'm not calling build Maya locator. I'm just calling build locator. And then within that function, you're able to uh, kind of customize what that function is doing. So in the example on screen right now, it's the Maya builder uh, building that locator. So I've highlighted the three, three lines here that are uh, Maya specific. Um, but everything else in that would be um, DCC agnostic. So those three lines right there are what actually defines uh, how to build that object in Maya. So I'm using PyMel here, so uh, the PM is for PyMel. Um, and just create the locator, give it a name, parent it, rename it, and you're on your way. So if I compare this with the Softimage one, it's pretty much exactly the same, except for a few, few minor, minor changes in the code. But everything else is exactly the same. So this is what I've been kind of working on in, in terms of like, I need the, the common language to do the same thing in two different, two or more different applications. And Python allows you to do that because Python is integrated into Maya and Softimage, all the other DCCs as well. Um, and to actually build a character, it takes no more than like six lines of code. So when I want to build this character Bob, that's all the code I need to, to actually run. Uh, in either DCC. And I can actually copy and paste this code from Maya to Softimage, and just it just goes. It just creates it. So it's really, really uh, powerful what you can do with Python. Um, and this is actually proof that you can actually do some really complicated stuff. You can create a system that is really generalized, uh, so you don't have to keep remembering how to how to create a locator in this application or that one. Uh, you can have your rigging team working on two separate applications uh, doing the same exact rigs. Um, and you can even have your animators 
split where half the team is on Maya, half the team is on Soft Damage. That's probably where we're going to end up uh, at hybrid uh, is kind of a split, I think. And that's actually a really exciting kind of experiment that uh, I'm uh, looking forward to because the, it just opens up the doors. Like if, if you don't know Soft Damage and you know Maya, you can get a job at hybrid as an animator uh, eventually. Um, and even still, like if you... Uh, if we get the Houdini implemented uh, version, then if you're a Houdini artist and you actually like animating in Houdini and uh, and whatnot, uh, you could do that as well. We could just push out a rig for Houdini and then cash out using Alembic, using you know our Python Alembic tools. And uh, the pipeline is really, really flexible then. So it's really, really interesting where we're going to be able to go uh, here uh, not too uh, long from now. Uh, to wrap up, Python is versatile, as I was just explaining. Um, can do some really heavy lifting, can do some simple stuff as well. Um, you, it's pretty much endless what you can do with Python uh, in the VFX uh, uh, pipeline. Uh, if you have people who know how to code in C++ and can get you bindings for different technologies, that's just going to open up some more uh, opportunities for you. Um, uh, it's easy to learn, and you never know enough Python. Uh, I think Dave's going to cover this in his talk, but uh, uh, once you start learning Python, you can never know enough, and you're always going to be able to find something that you didn't know uh, out there uh, on the on the internet. Um, and in your day-to-day -day work, you're going to come across instances where, like, you're banging your head against your desk and, like, how can I do this? And then just do a quick search and you can find someone has done this uh, maybe in for a different context, but it'll work uh, for the problem that you're on uh, right now. Um, let's see. Yes, we're hiring. Uh, <laughs> we need uh, some R&D developers, uh, junior to senior rigor, a couple other ones. If you're interested or know people that might be interested, uh, go to Hybrid's website and uh, fill out the, an application. Um, just to show you a few more things. Uh, so Hybrid's website. Uh, careers, you know, right there. Yeah, got a bunch listed there. Um, if you want to check out my website, uh, this is it, uh, etvrs.com. Uh, got some stuff on there, some old soft homage plugins uh, that I don't really work on anymore, but they're open source, uh, so check them out. Um, the Fabric Engine website for Kraken. Uh, go there if you want to uh, get in touch with me as well or sign up for the beta. I think we have some links on here as well. Um, I presented uh, Kraken at uh, Seagraph as well, so the videos for that is, uh, are up here as well. Um, and lastly, on GitHub, uh, we have the Kraken repo. So uh, again, if you do want to help out, get in touch, and I can get you uh, access to it, and you can fork it and uh, go on your merry way. Thank you.